Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about getting off the truck and how to get off the truck. So if you're new in business or heck, you're just looking to get into business, let's talk about how to get off the truck with a special guest. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Hopefully, there's enough content for you. Six years of podcasts. Go back, listen, binge, whatever. Anywhere podcasts are found and also on YouTube. Uh, the content is mostly good sometimes, so go back, watch. Uh, watch me uh, age through the years. Enjoy it either way. Uh, but if you didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do, and that is how I live the lavish lifestyle I do right now of uh, free bumper stickers when I go to events. Uh, so if you want to help me out, let me place your orders. I want to be a rep. My number directs 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. So text me. Even throw everything in your cart. Just click the button that says Save Cart. Let me know, and I will put it in and cost you nothing extra. And guess what? I get credit for it. And uh, there you go. You can help me afford my name brand hair gel or whatever. So uh, do that. And if you haven't yet, you know all the stickers and everything else is from American Window Cleaner Magazine. Just go to awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription, please. I will see your name come across. And there's so many of you who go, oh, man, I'm getting a subscription to the magazine. This is awesome. I see it. And it is like an amazing virtual high five. So go and do that. It would be absolutely rad. So anyway, on to the show. If you are in the business and you have not gotten off the truck yet, we have an awesome, awesome episode for you. What's going on, man? Thanks for having me, Jersey. I'm excited to be here. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Now, if anybody's living under the ro- and under a rock, by the way, we did a show and you have a podcast and everything else, but if anybody's not seen you or doesn't recognize you, Tell us who you are, what you are, where you're from. Tell us your story. Yeah, man. So uh, I'm Dave Mormon. I live just outside Vancouver, British Columbia. So I am in Canada. So maybe that's why I've been told I talk a little bit funny. But uh, <laughs> that, that is me, man. And I got my, uh, my start in entrepreneurship. I actually came up playing high-level soccer, um, went, to, went to college on a scholarship. I ended up getting back-to-back concussions that ended up kind of halting my life for that track. And uh, I had to figure out, well, what am I going to do next? And a friend of mine bumped into a campus recruiter on campus and she gave me a CD-ROM. This is back in 2009. It said, hey, Dave, run your own painting business. You can make, you know, all the riches in the world. At that time was $20,000 in the summer. And uh, I bought a used pickup truck. I went door knocking. And that was my initial inauguration into entrepreneurship was back in 2009. I lost about 15 pounds jersey. I was working on the truck. I know we'll talk about that. Painted about 30 houses and uh, really cut my teeth in entrepreneurship. But as hard as it was, it was like something ignited uh, within me that was like, I don't think I'm going to go get, you know, a real job and go and wear a suit and tie. And I know, you know, business has gotten more informal since then. But at the time, that's what you did. You got a business degree. You got a business like job. So that set me on now a path at present time. I'm in 15th year of entrepreneurship, still owning my home service business. We we rebranded. It's called Revive Services today. Uh, We pressure wash homes. We do exterior painting and we do Christmas lights. Uh, so we run year round now. Um, so that's kind of me professionally in uh, in a nutshell, trying to bottle up entrepreneurship. And, you know, I love coming on these talk shows because if I can give one piece of value and, and the mistake I made that can help a listener, I'm, I'm game for it. So that's me. Nice. Nice. Let me ask you a question, uh, a random, I'm going to put you on the spot. But how long from when you started that painting company that first summer did it take you to be like, oh, dude, this is like, this could be more than just like a good paying job. Like this could be a thing. Yeah, great question. So it wasn't in the first year. I did $52,000 in revenue my first year. I lost 15 pounds. I made 
less than $10,000. And I called up my regional manager. I said, I'm not going to do this anymore. He said, Dave, you got to stick around this and that. Okay, I'll think about it. And I came back for a second year. And that year, I did 105000 I made 30000 And that was the light bulb switch the second season. Like, man, this is a, this is a real thing. Um, yeah. and, and that's where I had the confidence. I had a small team of, you know, three, four painters. That's where it was like, you know what, I think this could be real. And then it just started growing from there. But it, it took me, man, into my second season to actually be like, I think this thing can work out. Yeah, that's pretty quick too. I mean, there's a lot of guys even watching or listening now that are like, they've been in business for a while and they're just uh, owner operators, which nothing wrong with that. But there's a lot of people who just kind of do this thing. And they're like, cool, I make this amount of money and have a really well-paying job. I think for me, it took probably two, three years. And I, I, I remember days in the very beginning when I, I hired my friend, we'd like cancel the day to go play video games. Like, you know, it just was, it just didn't make sense on the business side of things. I just thought about it as that way. And then all of a sudden one day I'm like, well, I had a really good month, but what if I like did that or, or re and then all of a sudden your brain goes, Oh, this could be a business. And that's part of whole getting off of the truck is, you know, the guy who the CEO of Coca-Cola doesn't make soda or sweep floors. Like he's got his job to do. And there's other people that do other things. hundred percent, man. And I think like, you know, we'll talk about it today, but I think some people punish themselves if they're either on the truck or off the truck. And like, it's a message that I want to get out to the world. Like there's not a wrong way there. There's pros and cons to everything in life. Like if you choose tonight to go to the gym and work out, that's a conscious choice. There's benefits with that, but there's also benefits. If you just sat and watched Netflix tonight, like maybe you had a 13 hour day and that is the best thing that your body needs. So yeah, there's just pros and cons to everything. And I think sometimes the owner operators feel like they've maybe failed in business because like they haven't got off the truck, but like I'm 15 years now into owning a business and there's still to this day, I'd say, I tell everybody this probably two days Jersey per month that I'm like, let's throw it out. Let's quit. Let's do it. And I'm I, whatever, 15 years times 12 months, hundreds of months of business. And so it, it it's just choosing your heart and your path you want to walk down for me. I chose the get off the truck model because I like the freedom that a business that can run without me, but I'm not the guru preaching, you know, I just sit on a beach and drink Starbucks all day and it runs tickety boo. Cause there are problems when you get a team, it's just a conscious choice. What foundation do you want to build and what path do you want to walk And there? You shouldn't listen to anyone saying you're doing it wrong because you build your business for you and your family. Yeah. And by the way, I can tell, you talk to people in the U.S. a lot because you said Starbucks instead of Tim Horton. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I still love my man. I was in Timmy's uh, yesterday. I got their uh, their iced coffee is called an ice cap and it is delightful. But I'm I'm a Starbucks guy. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but there you go. So if nobody knows that 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 Tim Hortons is like the original Starbucks, I think even before Starbucks. But we don't. I don't think we have any of them yet. So. I don't think so, man. And Tim Hortons, we call it Timmy's here. It is a, it is a nationwide chain. And I actually grew up in small town, Ontario, in a small town called Brantford. If there's any people that like hockey, it's where Wayne Gretzky's from. Oh, nice. Town of 80,000. There's 18, when I moved out that way, 18 Tim Hortons in a town of 80,000. So it just shows you it is like Tim Hortons on every corner. So crazy. crazy. Now, is Wayne Gretzky, is he like a hockey player or? Yeah. yeah famous. Yo, I'm gonna say, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could get a real Canadian to just melt down on camera there. But you did. You did. Uh, yeah. But no, that's exactly it. I mean, there's no wrong way to do business. And, and however somebody does it, it has to be their time either to get off the truck or if they say, I never want to get off the truck. Awesome. I mean, a lot of the people listening know Stevo from WCR. He loves cleaning windows. He'll never not clean windows because he just really enjoys it. It doesn't mean he has to have employees and make this thing. And sometimes there's this measuring contest, especially at shows that people walk up and go, oh, hey, how many people do you have? That's the first question. It's like, yeah, OK, the real question is how much net profit did you? I mean, like, that's the real question. It's not how many people you have or any of those other things. Yeah, man, I think number of trucks, uh, amount of revenue are terrible ways to judge success in a business. We should yeah. be asking how happy are you are on the day to day, uh, how much you're enjoying your job, how does this business propel your family life? 
um, because there's a lot of guys that have scaled up the seven figure business and maybe weren't as present for their marriage or their kids. And I'm, I'm not saying that I've figured that out by any means, but I do think if you can keep business in its category, the best you can, um, you, you can, yeah, sacrifice some revenue in again, conscious choice to be a present father, a present partner. It's all choices again, that you want to mm-hmm. make. So I think we just got to figure out what path we want to walk and what, how the business is going to serve our life. Yeah. And with that being said, if somebody wants to get off the truck, say they're listening, they're like, man, this is the year I'm going to be in an office. Like what is, what is the time? Like, what is the, what is the thing that is the biggest kind of driving factor to somebody that you say, okay, this thing happened, it's time. Like, what is that one thing? Is it, is it gross? Is it hourly? Is it uh, time, like you said? Is it just the drive to want something bigger? What is that one thing? That- yeah, I think it needs to come internally, man. Like, I think it really needs to be, do you want to have a business that can, you know, run with less of you? Because a lot of us get in the service business and the fulfillment is like a huge component. Like whether we're cleaning windows or pressure washing, you need to be very realistic. If that's the business you want to own, you need to answer who's going to do your fulfillment. And I'll get, I like to give resources on talks like these. So two books I'd really recommend. One is reading Michael Gerber's book, The E-Myth. Um, you know, guys, and, and I'll be transparent. I ran a painting business where I worked really hard. I was off the truck, but I was still very much in it on the day to day. And I didn't read the E-Myth till 2016. And I really learned, wow, there's three people in a business. Dave just happens to be all three technician, yeah. manager, entrepreneur. Now, if I had to rank those in order of my, what I believe are my God given gifts, entrepreneur one, I can manage and I, I can do the technician, although it doesn't totally fill me up and I'm not great at it. So yeah. um, that's the first resource. The other one, how I've turned more into an entrepreneur is called Who Not How. And so that book will tell you if you want to go far in business and, and build something larger than yourself, you need to find your who's. Okay. So my technicians today love our team members they are my who's that allow me to have some freedom from the job site. So I think really Jersey, it starts with what do you want? And then it does come down to just a mindset. And I think there's a lot of guys out cleaning windows, pressure washing homes that would love to be freed up. They just don't know how to go about doing it. So to your question, the first thing is like shift some gears in the mindset for like what's possible. And then I think you'll go on this path of, of discovery. Yeah, I think too, people who haven't been big uh, don't understand what it costs to be big, right? Like um, I've talked about a guy that I know, a great guy, by the way, and I don't think he watches, so uh, I apologize. Since then, things have changed immensely um, together, but he was doing almost $3 million a year, tons of trucks, tons of guys. You're like, whoa, like this is crazy. Uh, he was doing about thirty, thirty-two thousand dollars in profits a year. Now, wow. the headaches that go into having a company that big have to be paid. They have to pay off, yeah. right? And if it's not there, people just go, "Well, if I'm big, if I'm off the truck, I can be big." And they miss the the fact, like you're saying, it's the strength, it's the pros, it's the things that come into that that you know are not money. That it's other things to it, and you have to have that mindset to understand that. Yeah. I don't know, man, if it's more not to paint with a broad brush, but in in working with some business owners, if it's more of an American and ego thing of just like beat my chest at the trade show, I got the most trucks. I'm the biggest dog around in Canada. We just don't have that as much. Like I'm just like the revenue. If someone tells me their revenue, that's indicative of the structure of their business, but by no means does it tell what's on the bottom line. And it's kind of that coin phrase. It's not my quote, right? The, the revenues for vanity, the profits for sanity. And those of you that want to build more of an enterprising model I'm talking about, I've always had a minimum of a 20% net as my true north. So if you're going to scale up and hit a million bucks, I want to see 200,000 on that bottom line. Or if I want to get off the truck and build a profitable $400,000 business with two crews going or two technicians, I want to see 80K at the end of the day. So I think 
sometimes we just don't know what business we're building and we end up a nice picture on Facebook or a nice banner picture on Facebook, all our trucks, but it yeah. doesn't tell the whole story. Yeah. If it's you, people focus on the wrong things, you know, they too, they focus too much on the whole getting big and not on the efficiencies and doing it right and everything else. So yeah. it's totally, a, you know, if you are off the truck, it allows you to do so much more, which is why for me, I was the same thing. I did one job, uh, one commercial job took me three hours. And uh, when I was done with that, I hired my first person. Wow. I knew that I wanted to do the business side of it. I didn't want to necessarily do the tech side of it. Yeah. And there's other people who go, well, okay, if I'm not doing the thing, right, if I'm not cleaning or painting in your, your case, or if I'm not doing the thing, what do I do? And that's where people sometimes get lost in the, well, I'm not big enough to do X, Y, Z, or I'm not um, strong enough to do X, Y, Z. And they, they just don't see the vision of what they do. But when you get off the truck, mm -hmm. what are those things that you focus on that you never could focus on before? Yeah, such a good question, man. And I think like it starts again with understanding of like the, the different levels in business. So I think if you're doing the technical work right now, you know, you've got to ask if you replace that role. And I realize that it's tough to hire people and, and everything. Let's say you could replace that role, let's say for 30, let's say $25 an hour, let's just say you're going to then trade those $25 an hour cleaning tasks. You're going to level up into more of those marketing sales activities, right? Where to replace a really good salesperson could be 70,000, 80,000 a year. So that's now you traded $25 an hour, you're doing the $40 an hour. So a lot of us spend time doing the fulfillment when really the CEO's number one job is to be growing the business. And yeah. don't grow the business onesie, twosie jobs at a time. You build out structures and systems. And sometimes we think systems are gray and boring. I'll tell you a simple system I made at my company. We made an 18-step in-person sales process. So whoever's going out in my company to do an estimate, they're following these 18 steps. I built that four years ago. We've sold thousands of jobs now following that process. So that's something that I built that is now leveraged over time. And then we've made other marketing ones as well, like for you to get Google reviews today and go and advertise those on social media or into your print materials. Those are all CEO type of tasks that you will not have the time for if you're out in the field uh, grinding it out. So yeah. again, it's not wrong you're doing that, but it is wrong if you want to get off the truck and build your business. Because the day jersey, you sign up to own a business, I'd say minimum 50 hours of work for your first few years. If you then have the audacity to say you're going to grow a business and be the tech, another 40 hours. And that's how guys end up it's, it's that famous quote from Cameron Harold. He scaled up 1-800-GOT-JUNK with Brian Scudamore. He said the famous quote, if you don't have an assistant, you are the assistant. And that's something that's really stuck with me because business is a team sport. And to have the ego to say, Dave's going to be off the truck and I don't need people. It's just like, man, I, I, business for me has always been a team game. Yeah, that's 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 the thing. Everybody talks about like allocating AI also, right? Like what can systems do as far as that side of things go? And you 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 if you have something that you're doing and you're spending time doing that say $20 an hour thing, when you could be spending that same amount of time doing a $100 an hour thing, that's where that really comes into play. It's like you can hire a tech or somebody to clean the windows. Awesome. You can't necessarily hire somebody to run your business. Yeah. If you do, then you're going to be the tech. You can hire somebody to do that, but they're going to spend, they're going to charge you so much more to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things that we do that's valuable and you have to spend your time doing those more valuable things. That's just efficiencies in, in general. Yeah, man. And then you got to give up trying to be a perfectionist too. Like my coach back in the day had me take a Sharpie and write the word control on a piece of paper. He said, okay, good job. Now Dave, rip it up into a hundred pieces because you've got to find people when they hit 80% competency level, awesome. That's now off my plate. And I struggled with this, man. Like we had calls coming in. We use the CRM jobber. I'm naturally a very organized person. And so, man, I love dragging and dropping and scheduling on jobber. And for me to get someone in the office was like so hard to pull. It was easy to get off the truck, tough to get out of the office. And it's yeah. like, I had to do that. And the office manager messed up some scheduling and underbid some stuff. And 
there was problems, but we fast forward four years to today and now we've got a team that's running the office. And so we've got to get out of our own way as business owners. Again, if the mission is to achieve off the truck and out of the day to day, even you've got to start firing yourself at each level. So I think for me, the first one is getting that competent technician in replacing yourself in the field. But again, we've got to be realistic with ourselves. If this is what our God given talent is, and is this how we're actually wired? Cause not everyone Jersey is, is an enterprising entrepreneur and me, I'm content having one local profitable location. I've got buddies that are like, why don't you franchise this thing at a hundred mark? I just, I'm not interested in yeah. that at this stage. So again, I know where my limitations are for what I want from the business. And I think everyone needs to be realistic to that. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've heard the whole, well, nobody does it like me. No, but mm -hmm. I guarantee that the people you are hiring, if you're hiring right, are doing certain things better than you. You know, you're looking for a clone as far as how they do things, but not a clone in every aspect because it's not going to happen, right? Yeah. If you have, I want you to go to the door and this is how you greet people. Perfect. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. If I want you to be personable, you can hire personable people. They're not going to be a clone of you, but they're going to be just who you want them to be as far as the representation. But, but that's also very hard. How many times has somebody told you that, I, well, I can't have employees because all my customers would leave they only do it because it's me or somebody's unique selling point is it's me they like me and you think that until you have a really good person doing that and i've had times where customers have walked up i've actually been on a job site with somebody we had the flu so we had like a bunch of texts out i was on the job site doing it but i had not met this guy in years right but he had the same operations officer was always there and he walks out with a check and he goes, actually, no offense. Can I give this to Gary? That was my operations guy. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that was, he was the me, you know, I, it, it didn't matter that they liked me because it, there was no me anymore. It was the next guy. There's always somebody that they can like. Yeah. So true, man. And I think like a lot of us start our window cleaning businesses. We're, we're the attractive character of our business, right? We're on the branding. We deal face to face with the client. I would just caution those that want to scale and get off the truck if you build that in your brain for three seasons, four seasons, five seasons, where Jersey or Dave or Gary is the guy, um, you start to bottleneck where this thing can go. So especially yeah. those newer to business, I actually think you're advantaged because you've not yet trained your brain on how to do all these tasks. And I think as a business owner, you need to know how the windows are getting cleaned. I think you're advantaged if you've not cleaned 10,000 windows and you're the master at it. You should be the master at um, attracting people, building vision, um, creating a roadmap where this is going, and then like really growing your business. But again, it, it shouldn't be forced on people to get to X amount of people or whatnot. There's sweet spots I've learned in my journey where we've camped the business at for a year or two just to catch up on our feet. And I ran two businesses at a time too, where I'm like, hey, this business is just going to do this much this year because we're going to focus our efforts on this other one. So it doesn't always need to be exponential year over year growth either. It's okay to, to camp it for a season or two. Yeah. And I'm going to put you on the spot again here, but the biggest thing about this whole getting off the truck thing is hiring good people, right? I mean, you can't just go, Hey, this is the first guy I had interest. I hired him. He's crap. I, yeah, nobody hired, but in your words, your idea what are you looking for in a position to get, or how do you hire somebody great? Yeah, so good. So we'll, we'll do a technician for an example here um, as, as we're talking about getting off the truck. So you want to run what's called the behavioral based interview. Okay. So for us, for I've hired over 150 staff now for my companies in the last decade and a half. So you learn a thing or two and I made a lot of bad hires as well. So that's why I love talking about this. So, um, we really gauge for, we want to hire for attitude and core values and we want to train for skill. Okay. So a okay. couple core values at my company, one is service and two is excellence. So we want to look for people that embody a spirit of service and serve the client at the highest level. And so through our interview process, we have found a strong link to those core values uh, in something what's called goal attainment. Okay. So I learned this back in my painting days. So if I asked Jersey and I said, hey, Jersey, tell me about a time you've set a goal for yourself and the steps you took to achieve that. You could go and say, hey, all back in high school, I did this. And then I was on the football team and then I had this. 
the right candidates are going to be gushing with examples versus people looking kind of deer in the headlights. So yeah. that would be one thing we would we would gauge for is really goal attainment. Um, and, and another one would be, uh, Jersey, tell me about a time you've done something exceptionally hard in your life and the steps you took to achieve that. We look for um, tenacity and hard working and someone that can stick with tasks, working where we are, very hot, you're working at heights, you're on roofs, we need someone with that grit factor. And then we've got a number of knockout questions by way of driver's license, um, do they have access to a vehicle, are they okay working at heights? So in a 40 minute interview, I would say I'm about 70% confident this is going to be a good hire, but then we always do um, a, a working interview as well, which is one day paid training right alongside with our uh, field supervisor. We'll train you up. If it's a good fit, awesome. If not, we'll pay you for the day. And so yeah. we marry up that in-person behavioral-based interview with the on-site, and then we're going to have a pretty solid chance of getting a good hire. But Anyone that can tell you they can interview in Starbucks perfectly will be lying to you because in home services, you got to have that yin and yang, the, the yeah. core values. We got to do a green check mark there. We'll call a past employer reference, by the way, to make sure. And then we'll marry that up with the, with the infield uh, training day. We do that and we'll have a much better chance of landing. We call them rock stars uh, at our business. Yeah. Yeah, hire the person, train the position. That's <laughs> what I always say. I like that. That's great. I, it, and I'll ask you, how many times have you hired somebody where like, oh man, interviewing great. Did they, they were so awesome. You get them out the first day and you're like, whoa, yep. that person sucks. Like, it, yep. and it's gone both ways where somebody can really interview really well, but they are just not a fit for your crew, your vision, your anything. Man, one of the best interviews I ever had was with the gentleman years ago. And, and I remember my manager was sitting beside me at another table, like doing payroll. And he, he, once the candidate left, he said, man, that guy's an 11 out of 10. And like smoked it on the interview. Got in first month of employment, pretty good. But as we hit month two, three, excuses started happening. We, we noticed we call them mavericks, which is kind of putting yourself above the team. Yeah. Um, and, and Mavericks cannot be managed. You need to actually coach them out of your organization. So this guy ended up being a Maverick where, where they're very highly skilled. He's one of the best window cleaners I've seen, but the lowest commitment to the company. Those are Mavericks. You really yeah. want to build your team around all stars, which are high competency and also high commitment to the company. So, yeah. and then the other two, you've got a loyal worker Loyal worker, low skill, very committed. I love loyal workers because we can coach them um, up to be uh, all stars as well. So you just want to be aware of, um, and then low performer, low skill, uh, low commitment. They they need to get coached out as well. So you've got to kind of know that matrix of hiring, and you want to build your team around all stars. Yeah, yeah. I had a guy one time. Uh, just interviewed great. We ended up having the operations officer was in the office that day too. So he came in and did like almost a second interview. Great guy was great. We said, well, we'll do, we did the same kind of thing where you had the paid day of training, basically okay, come in tomorrow. Let's do it. You know, this will be great. As soon as he got in the work truck, he handed out all the other techs that were in the truck, a pamphlet about uh, the legalization of marijuana. And he had a clipboard with him and he wanted everybody to sign before they got going. And I was like, well, I get that's your view. That's, a very odd way to start a thing. So whatever, they kept going. As soon as he got to the job, he pulled out uh, rubber gloves. He brought a box of rubber gloves with him. And we're like, you know, what are you doing with the rubber? He's like, oh, I hate getting dirty. I don't I do not do well with dirt on my hands. I just don't like it. And he's going to be a window cleaner. I'm going, yeah. I don't. And then the operations after that one day, it was like, I, th I think you're a great guy. I just think that this is not you. You yeah. know, it just was very awkward to kind of see. And it was one of those things where none of those things would have been something that you would have seen in an interview. It's, it's yeah. just, it's not. And that's what scares people. I think why they don't jump off the truck uh, right away. Cause they, they're scared of that. Yeah, man, I agree. And like, I think again, if you choose this enterprising model to grow, um, you're going to have people issues uh, at every step along the yeah. way. I, I compare it a lot, actually, if, if anyone has ever managed tenants before and has maybe a rental property, people will, you could post that up online and get all different responses, right? Uh, oh, passive income is great. But then, man, I, this tenant cost me 50 grand of debt. So it's just, it's a very similar skill set in managing people. 
Um, it's a skill set that I've developed and I personally like. Um, but again, it's not for everybody because some people get insanely frustrated with excuses from people where yeah. I know, man, every Monday I'm going to have a technician call in sick. I just know it. And it's always Monday, but it's just like, that's just how, how it is. I'm okay with that. I don't lose sleep around it. We just do the best we can with it. So I think, you know, you got to throw out your kind of control freak mindedness of everything with the business if you're choosing to grow because growing takes a lot of cash, it's messy and it takes time. But again, I, I believe the outcome is greater to make that decision, um, but it doesn't mean it's easy. Yeah, I feel like you're building a business, not just a job by doing it. So, But again, there's no wrong way. Uh, however you're doing it, there's just no wrong way because it's your business. So however you're doing it is perfectly fine. But if you do want to get off the truck, there's definitely ways to go about it. And uh, if anybody here, again, how do we find your podcast and uh, all the content that you put out? Yeah, man. So um, kind of something unique with me was I was able to get my business to run without me. And I started a coaching organization three years ago. So I'm CEO at Home Service Business Coach. We've helped a few hundred uh, entrepreneurs now transition to be CEOs of their business. Um, best place to find me would just be on uh, any platforms under my name or just search my podcast is literally called Home Service Business Coach. We are trying to keep up to Jersey here. He's got a few years on us for sure. Uh, and I just try post value for someone um, that listens in because for me, my journey behind me started with behind me, my first $20 book. Um, and I realized not everyone has big budgets for coaching, but uh, if you've got 20 bucks, you can read a book or listen to a free podcast. So I just want to get the word out for those that want to walk that path and scale. I want to be a, a stop along the way to help people because uh, for me, it was like my eyes opened up when I'm like, wow. I can learn business systems and I can be an entrepreneur. It's a different skill set than a technician. But again, you got to tether it back to how you're wired and what you want. Yeah, I love it. I love, uh, we call them window cleaning nerds, but I love them. There's people, thousands of people right now listening to a podcast about window cleaning business. Like, it's great. I love to see that there's other nerds out there. I love people who learn. I love people who put stuff out there and try to help people learn too, so... That's awesome. I really appreciate you kind of uh, spending some time. Uh, check it out. If you guys haven't yet, uh, all the podcasts, all the everything that you put out has been phenomenal. I, I mean, I obviously have not gone through everything you put out because you've put out years and years and years of content too. Um, but I, I love other nerds in the industry. So I appreciate that. If you take that as a compliment, I swear. I do, man. And guys, go back in my show and find the episode with Jersey because we get into some more tricks and tips uh, of his story. So again, yeah. man, it's just so fun to do this. And if we ever want to chat, uh, you know, pricing, finances, more hiring, I'm, uh, I'm an open book and just yes. love bringing value to these conversations. Nice, nice. Well, I appreciate that. And if you guys didn't know, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So definitely let me know if I can place an order. 862-312-2026. Give me that uh, virtual high five of awesomeness there. And if you are the nerd that we're talking about, go check out the American Window Cleaner magazine. It is the only paper magazine shipped to your door every single month with pictures, articles, posters, even stickers to be more of a nerd like me. So go and do that, awcmag.com. Get yourself a subscription, and I would be forever grateful. So I appreciate everything. Thank you for learning. If you're going to get off the truck, do it. I'm telling you, you'll never look back. It changes the entire dynamic of what you're doing. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.